Okay, so today I'm going to show you some clean flight uh, switch configuration stuff on a Tundagy 9XR. So the 9XR basically doesn't have any six position switches, doesn't have any four position switches or five position switches. However, um, you can configure your switches to add on to each other or exclude or override them. So if you watch down here this AUX4, if I flip this switch, I've got it so it goes to the lower quarter. If I flip another switch, it goes to the middle. If I flip another switch, it goes up again. And if I flip yet another switch, it goes all the way to the top. So basically I've got four positions on one channel using four switches and they all override each other. So no matter the position of these three switches here, if I flip this one down here, it overrides whatever the other ones are doing. So if I've got this one enabled, it just does between the two. If I do this one, it just does between the two, this one between the two, this one between the two settings. Um, they all take precedence. So this one override, this one overrides this one, this one over here overrides these two, and the one down the back overrides the other three. So you can set that up on the menus. If I go into the menus and show you that, and basically if you scroll down here, you can do crazy setups like this. So it's basically adding all the switches together and only enabling the feature, only enabling the output when the switch is enabled, which is why the switch is listed twice on here for each one. And you have to use an offset um, on them as well, on some of them, but you can fiddle about with that to your heart's content. So, uh, also on the left hand side, I've got AUX1 set up to do a two position switch, AUX2 to use the pot, AUX3 to do a three position switch. So, I've got some crazy switch combinations that I want to be able to use with my flight control software. So previously, clean flight, base flight, and multi we only let you do either three or six position switches and nothing else. Um, two position switches kind of worked um, just because they fit in the high and low values, so they were usable as well. However, what I'm going to show you now is something that's a lot more configurable than that. So I'm just going to update this screen before I show you it. There we go. I should have done that before I start the video, but there we go. Right. Here we go. So what we're looking at now is the AUX configuration tab. So you can see my receiver outputs here first. Then I'll quickly show you that switch overriding behavior on the channel. So you can see the kind of values that you get out of it. That's that four position switch setup. Here is the pot being moved. Here's a two position switch and a three position switch. Okay, so I want to assign things to the pot and my crazy four switch combo. So if I go onto the auxiliary tab, I can first set up arming it on aux one when the switch is high, and like so. And we can save that and test it by flipping the switch. And you can see that the channel indicator, this little yellow bit, moves around when I fiddle with the switch. And on the left hand side, the indicator goes green when the function is enabled. So, great, simple. So now let's add something for one of the other switches. So let's let's do a crazy combination on AUX2, which is the pot. So I'm gonna set it up so that I can turn on various different flight modes and add a bit of extra behavior to it. Here we go. Three. Right, so these are all on AUX2, so you can see when I move the dial, the little bars move accordingly, the little indicators move accordingly. So now I want to have it so that when it's in the low position it activates that mode, when it's in this position it activates that mode, when it's in this position it activates barrow mode. When it's in anything over halfway, the mag stays on. When it's over this area and you can see the numbers updating down here as well 1700 you can see that when it's in that position and above it it enables that and when it's all the way at the top it enables that so let's try that and see what it looks like so we'll save that so you can see the angle is on because the indicator is on the left hand side over here if i move the pot or the position or the six position switch if you had a tyrannus 
then you can see it moving up to the different modes. There's Barrow, there's Mag, and then the modes get combined at the end. So that's how you can set up your switches like so. And if I want to have angle on on my crazy switch combination mode, um, then I can also add another range to it, and that was on AUX4. Now you can see my AUX4 setting here when I toggle that switch. So if I have that on in that mode, obviously this doesn't make sense for all of these things combined. Um, but, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So I'm also going to add a horizon switch as well. So I'm going to make it so the next switch on that channel does horizon. There we go, that should work. And you can pull the ranges up as you see fit. And we're going to add, let's see what else can we have. We can have a beeper on box four when I flip that one. And I'll also make it do an OSD as well. So here we're on 1650, so I'll line it up, 1650, away we go. Right, so let's save that and try that. So angle mode is on because the pot is in the right place. So if I just move the pot up so that the angle mode is not having effect on this. Now I'm going to use my switches. I'm going to turn them all off for now. So here's the crazy switch combo. That's that one. So that's now turned the angle mode on. If I do the next switch, it updates the channel here to turn on horizon mode. If I do the next one, I think that was a bit further down here. Yes, it was. No, nope, I didn't actually set that on AUX4 either. Let's do that. There we go. So here you can see that's the last switch, the OSD switch doing that, and the fourth position of it doing the beeper. So it's very configurable. So if you've got a good configurable transmitter, like if you get when you're running OpenTX, for instance, then you can combine all kinds of switches. So you can repurpose your trim switches for things. So you can make it so that you can have different combinations of things happening on a channel if you use the trim switches in combination with a switch. Um, you can also make it so you can combine switches that override each other. So I sometimes set it up so that these three switches in a row combine and override so you can get a three position switch or four positions out of three switches um, and likewise the same on the other side so this momentary one down the bottom is either quite useful for your panic button or for your heading adjust mode because it's something you don't want to keep on all the time and you can set it up so that you have mag head free and heading adjust and you can combine all the switches together with all the different ranges that you've got. There you go. Enjoy.